Welcome to the Care Clinic Pod. I'm Emma, and this is Jones. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Care Clinic. Today, we're going to be talking about antidepressants. Specifically, SSRIs and SNRIs. Yeah, you've probably heard of them. Maybe you're even taking one yourself. But have you ever thought about it? Millions of us rely on these little pills every single day. To shape our brain chemistry. It's kind of wild when you think about it. It is, and it really highlights how important it is to understand these medications beyond just, I take this because my doctor told me to. Mm, totally. So let's break it all down. Get into the nitty gritty. Starting with the basics. Mm. Our brains, they're these complex networks, right? Right, but how do they actually send messages? Yeah, how does that work? Well, it's all about these chemical messengers called neurotransmitters. They're like tiny couriers zipping between brain cells with important instructions. And when it comes to mood, two of the biggest players are serotonin and norepinephrine. Okay, so we have serotonin and norepinephrine regulating our mood. Yeah. I think I'm following so far, but where do SSRIs and SNRIs fit in? They come in when those messengers aren't quite doing their job properly. Imagine those couriers delivering messages, but then they get sucked right back up into their starting point too quickly. So the message doesn't get through. Exactly. It doesn't get through as strongly as it should. Not enough happy signals getting through. That's one way to put it. And that's where SSRIs come in. SSRI. Yeah, that stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Okay. And they basically block that reabsorption process. So the serotonin hangs around longer. Deliver those happy messages. Exactly. And then there's SNRIs. Which are? Serotonin norepinephrine it's a re reuptake inhibitor. There's a mouthful. I know, right? But they do the same thing for both serotonin and norepinephrine. They boost the levels of both messengers. A double whammy of happy. Precisely. So why do we need two different types if they're both supposed to improve mood? Well, they both can be effective for depression and anxiety, but they each have their own strengths. Interesting. So besides one targeting two neurotransmitters and the other just one, what else makes them different? Well, SSRIs have been around longer, and they're generally considered the first-line treatment for a lot of types of depression and anxiety. Okay. And they also tend to have a slightly milder side effect profile for a lot of people. Makes sense. So why would a doctor ever prescribe an SNRI instead of an SSRI then? Well, sometimes you need those extra couriers. You know, SNRIs, because they boost norepinephrine, they can be really helpful for conditions where fatigue and low energy are big issues. Well, that makes sense. I guess if your norepinephrine levels are low, you wouldn't have a lot of energy. Exactly. And SNRIs have also been shown to be really effective for managing chronic pain, especially nerve pain. Wow. So they're not just for mood then? Nope. They've even been used to help with things like fibromyalgia. That's pretty incredible. So we have these two types of antidepressants that work on different brain chemicals, but are there any differences in how they're actually taken? Both SSRIs and SNRIs usually come in till form and are taken daily, but the exact dosage depends on you and what you're trying to manage. You and your doctor would figure that out, right? Exactly. So just a pill every day sounds simple enough, but how do you even know which type is right for you? That's a great question. It really comes down to individual needs. Like we talked about your symptoms, your medical history, your lifestyle, any other medications you're taking, all of that factors in. So that's why talking to your doctor is so important. They'll help figure out the best path for you. Exactly. And don't forget, folks, the Care Clinic app can help you keep track of your medications, dosages, any side effects you might be experiencing. Having all that information organized can make those conversations with your doctor so much easier. Absolutely. It really helps you be an active participant in your healthcare. And let's talk side effects, the kind of the elephant in the room, right? Yeah, we have to talk about them. So what can people expect with SSRIs and SNRIs? Well, the good news is for most people, the side effects are usually pretty mild and tend to go away after a few weeks as your body adjusts. Oh, good. So we're not talking about anything too crazy. Not usually. Yeah. Some of the most common ones are things like nausea, headaches, dry mouth, changes in sleep patterns, maybe even some changes in your appetite or weight. Not fun, but manageable. Exactly. But they're usually temporary. What if someone is having side effects that are really bothersome or that don't go away? That's when you need to talk to your doctor. Yeah. Don't suffer in silence. Sometimes a simple dosage adjustment can make all the difference. Oh, okay. Or sometimes switching to a different medication in the same class might be helpful. Like if one SSRI doesn't work, you could try a different one. Exactly. It's about finding the right fit. And again, the Care Clinic app can be super helpful for tracking side effects, so you can share that information with your doctor. Okay, good to know. So we've been focusing on the positives, but I think it's important to acknowledge that there's still a lot we don't fully understand about how 
antidepressants work in the brain. That's true. We know they work on a chemical level, you know, influencing those neurotransmitters. Right. But the exact way they do that is still being researched. Wow. So we're prescribing these medications. They're helping millions of people. But we don't have the whole picture of how they're doing it. Isn't that fascinating? And that's the beauty of science. There's always more to learn. But what we do know for sure is that SSRIs and SNRIs can significantly improve quality of life for a lot of people. That's good to hear. And speaking of discoveries, I was reading that while SSRIs and SNRIs have some similar side effects, there are also some key differences. Oh, yeah. Uh, for instance, research suggests that SSRIs might have a slightly higher risk of certain sexual side effects. Oh. But on the other hand, SNRIs have been associated with a slightly higher risk of blood pressure changes. Okay. So it's important to weigh the potential benefits and risks with your doctor. Absolutely. And it's not just about medication either. Lifestyle factors play a huge role. Things like diet and exercise and sleep. Exactly. It's all about a holistic approach to your health. Totally agree. And you know what? The Care Clinic app has some great tools to help you stay on track with those healthy habits. Nice. So we've covered a lot in this first part of our episode on SSRIs and SNRIs. We explore what they are, how they work, and some of the key differences between them. It's been a great conversation so far. Welcome back, everyone. We're jumping right back into our conversation about SSRIs and SNRIs. It's really amazing how these medications can be life-changing for people. But I think it's also important to talk about the potential risks. Like with any medication, there's a balance to consider. Right. Absolutely. Transparency is key when we're talking about something as important as mental health. One of the things that comes up a lot with SSRIs and SNRIs is this idea that they might increase the risk of suicidal thoughts, especially in younger people. Yeah, I've heard that too. It's kind of a scary thought. Is there any truth to that or is it more complicated? It's definitely more nuanced. It's something researchers have been studying a lot and there's still debate in the scientific community. Some studies have shown a slight increase in suicidal thoughts in young people taking these medications, okay. while other studies haven't found a clear connection. So it's not a simple yes or no answer. Right. The key takeaway is that open communication with your doctor is really important, especially if you're thinking about these medications for yourself or for your child. Yeah. It's important to talk about any concerns you have and to keep a close eye on any changes in mood or behavior. That makes sense. And remember, if you're ever having thoughts of harming yourself, reach out for help immediately. Don't wait. Contact a crisis hotline or a mental health professional. That's so important. Thanks for talking about that so thoughtfully. Now, I want to switch gears a bit and talk about long-term effects of taking SSRIs or SNRIs. Is it safe to take these medications for a long time, or is that something people should be worried about? That's a really common question, and the answer, like a lot of things in medicine, is it depends. Okay, so not a simple answer there either. What are some of the factors that would determine that? Well, everyone's body chemistry is different, and people respond to medications in their own unique way. So some people might need to stay on these medications long term to manage their symptoms effectively while others might be able to gradually lower their dose or even stop taking them altogether eventually. With their doctor's guidance, of course. Of course. It's all about working with your doctor to figure out the best strategy so it's personalized. And I guess things like lifestyle changes, therapy support systems, all those play a role in long-term mental well-being too. Definitely. Medication is usually just one piece of the puzzle. What if someone has been taking an SSRI or SNRI for a while and they're thinking about stopping perfume? What's the best way to go about that? The most important thing is to never stop taking these medications suddenly. Oh, why is that? Because it can cause some pretty uncomfortable withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms? Like what kind of symptoms? It varies from person to person, but some common ones are things like dizziness, nausea, headaches, fatigue, mood swings. Some people even have flu-like symptoms. Oh, wow. That doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah, so it's best to taper off slowly under your doctor's supervision. Every step of the way. Exactly. And if you do have any withdrawal symptoms, let your doctor know so they can help you manage them. Commu communication is so important throughout the entire process. Oh, and by the way, the Care Clinic app can be super helpful for keeping track of your medication schedule and logging any symptoms you're experiencing. Right. It's a great tool for that. We've covered a lot of ground today, from potential risks and long-term effects to the importance of talking to your doctor. Yeah, it's been a really insightful conversation so far. And, you know, it's important to remember that asking for help with your mental health isn't a weakness. It's a sign of strength. I totally agree. There's no shame in reaching out for support, whether it's therapy medication, support groups, even apps like Care Clinic. There are so many resources out there to help people. And it's not just about managing symptoms. It's about thriving, living a fulfilling life. So true. 
So where are we headed next in this exploration of SSRIs and SNRIs? In part three, we're going to talk about some alternative treatments for depression and anxiety. It's a whole world of possibilities beyond medication. That sounds really interesting. I can't wait to hear about it. Make sure to tune in for the final part of our series on SSRIs and SNRIs. Welcome back to Care Clinic for the final part of our series on SSRIs and SNRIs. We've covered a lot of ground, you know, how they work, potential risks and benefits. And, of course, talking to your doctor. Right. Always talk to your doctor. But now we want to get into some alternative approaches to treating depression and anxiety. That's a good area to focus on because medication isn't the only way to feel better. So what are some other treatments people could try? I know things like meditation and mindfulness are really popular right now. You're right. And there's a good reason for that. Research has shown that mindfulness meditation can be really powerful for reducing stress and boosting mood. It's like training your brain to be more resilient. Uh, exactly. And it's not just meditation. Yoga is another great option. Yoga. Yeah, it combines physical postures with breathing exercises and mindfulness. It can be super helpful for anxiety and depression. That sounds really relaxing, but what about people who like to be more active? Is there something for them? Exercise is a fantastic mood booster. You know, for some people with mild to moderate depression, regular exercise can be just as effective as medication. I can totally see that working out always helps me feel better. It's like a natural antidepressant running, swimming, dancing, even just a brisk walk in nature can make a difference. So we've got mindfulness yoga exercise. Those are all good for mild to moderate symptoms. But what about people who need more help? Are there alternatives to medication for more severe cases? Absolutely. Therapy is a really valuable tool for managing depression and anxiety, no matter how severe they are. What kind of therapy are we talking about? Cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is a really effective one. CBT? Yeah, it focuses on changing negative thought patterns and behaviors that contribute to depression and anxiety. Like rewiring your brain. Exactly. And it can be done one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. So many options. We've covered so much in this three-part series. Yep. It's been really eye-opening learning about SSRIs and SNRIs and then all these alternative treatments. It's been great talking about all of this with you, and I hope our listeners feel empowered by all this information. Me too. The biggest takeaway is that no one is alone, and there are so many ways to find support for your mental health. And don't forget, resources like the Care Clinic app can give you some extra support and guidance. If you're struggling, reach out to a healthcare professional. Explore these alternative treatments, and remember, there's always hope. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the world of SSRIs, SNRIs, and beyond. See you next time. Take care.